Until one day in 2016, Keemstar uploaded a video where Kiwis attempts to justify why he sent a 12-year-old girl images while he was 17. And that had started a year and a half before the interview, so now the girl was 14 and he was 19. Either way, it's f***ing disgusting. And then he proceeds to shoot himself in the foot. Because... Okay, so it, he sent... Just, it... no. 12? Yeah. Yeah. You're done. YouTubers who ruin their careers in seconds. Y'all ready, chat? Y'all been, you know what I'm saying? Nah, it's the audio for me. I love cats. <laughs> All right, man. Let's get into uh this cat video. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to boy. So, All right, come on. Let's get in. Hey, guys. Welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to be talking about YouTubers who ruin their careers in seconds. There are a lot, and I'd like to make this a series probably gonna see a part two coming in the future but there are a lot of og youtubers that i forgot existed and i just remember wow they did something horrible but yep. i know i'm like mr long intro i'm sorry about that i'll make this one short if there is anything i want to say it's, it's that new music video coming out october 3rd it's yes black you guys again. finally don't have Alone. to listen to cherry soda on repeat ain't gonna lie the mix song lady we're gonna be all right it's tough I don't even know what that is anymore. I got you guys with a new music video, Spotify, Apple Music, all of that. Yeah, October 3rd, be there for the live premiere. It'll be on this channel. It's gonna be so fun with the live chat and everything. I'm thinking November, the EP will be out. And that EP will have music videos to every single song. And that'll be like a 30 minute video here on the main channel. So that's just to hype you guys up. But let's get started with our list. Vitaly ZD TV. Vitaly Zdorovetsky, also known as Vitaly ZD TV, was once the go to YouTube channel for hilarious pranks, with funny and original concepts at the time, such as Gold Digger pranks, Russian Hitman pranks, In the Hood pranks, and who could forget classics such as How to Get Girls to Kiss You, Getting Girls Panties, and the amazing Can I Eat Your Booty. The what? channel now sits at 10 million subscribers Damn, and over nine 1 years billion ago? video views, though his recent uploads don't match that oh. of a 10 million follower. Damn, oh, he, oh, damn. The truth about my downfall. Damn. The truth about his downfall really did the most views in the last two months. That's crazy. I thought I thought the last video he dropped was nine years ago, but his his most viral video with the most views was nine. He did it in the most popular. But I don't I've never watched this dude channel so what happened if we want to understand the fall of a man who was once getting a minimum of 20 million views per video we have to go to the very beginning before he was even a prankster on youtube let's go back to when vitaly was 18 in 2010 a russian friend of his called him up and told him he can make easy money if he just appeared in an adult video being broke an and living with his mom video. and abusive stepfather he took the chance and that's when this infamous video was filmed the video was a bang bus film where the girl picks up guys and fucks them in the van. Though Vitaly couldn't get hard, so it was an extremely awkward 12 minute video. Yes, I watched all of it. Yes, I was alone. Yes, I had lotion the next year. That's crazy. Oh my God. Yo, deal. Imagine, oh yo, imagine you become a famous YouTuber and niggas bring up the fact that you, could, you couldn't get it up on a bang bus video. Dog, let's. Bro, niggas brought it up that you couldn't get it up on a bang bus video. I would be so sick. Yo, and I know there was haters in this comment, like every video he dropped. <laughs> this is a banger, but you couldn't bang the bitch on the bang bus. <laughs> Yo, listen. Oh my God. I would, no, bro. See, this is why you gotta just make better decisions. You know, you know, God damn. Year in 2011, Vitaly would create his YouTube channel and begin uploading pranks to no avail. It wasn't until June 2nd, 2012 that he'd upload the Miami zombie attack prank, a video where Vitaly pretends to be on bath salts scaring the locals. This, of course, was a reference to the situation that occurred oh, only yeah. a week prior where a man on bath salts bit off a homeless person's face. face. Yeah, kind of a weird thing to crazy. base your prank off of, but hey, it was 2012 and I understand it was a different time. The video gained 10 million views in a week and gained Vitaly 70,000 subscribers. This even Jesus. caught the attention from Daniel Tosh from Tosh.0. Oh. I wonder what Daniel Tosh- Damn! I haven't heard about Tosh.0 in oh a grip. Tosh.0 oh was overtaken by ridiculousness. You, yo, and y'all wanna know something? Y'all wanna know something? Tosh.0 oh in ridiculousness are nothing but reaction channels. Y'all understand that, right? They're reaction channels that watched the video prior. Y'all understand that, right? That's crazy. 
That is insane. Taking over. Tosh.0 was that shit back in the day. She's doing now. Oh, and not to mention CNN. Oh. So, a guy in, in Miami, a prankster, decides to go out, uh, dress up as a zombie, and, uh, and covered in blood, and he starts running around chasing people. Look what he does to this guy. Like, you can see the front of his shirt when he turns. He's, he's covered in blood, and he, he chases this poor guy here, and numerous people, and they're rolling on it, right? It's a prank, so he chases people around, scaring the absolute heck out of them. <laughs> he rolled the momentum and kept making prank videos and started becoming the face of YouTube pranks, along with FouseyTube, Roman Atwood, Dennis Rohde, and several others. Saying Vitaly got into a lot of controversies is... An understatement. But I'll tell you guys the biggest ones. In 2014, Vitaly was arrested for streaking the field during the 2014 World Cup final in Brazil. He had a natural born prankster across his chest. Oh, that nigga's on the move, too. Oh, they caught him? Oh, they caught him. You need to run faster, my guy. On May 25th, 2016, he was arrested for trespassing after climbing the, the Hollywood, Hollywood sign. sign. Oh, I do, I do remember this guy. See, I was just having this conversation with uh, Mikey and Aaron. There's a lot of YouTubers that come up on my recommended or I know things that they did, but I do not know their name. I didn't know this nigga's name, but I do remember that nigga doing that shit. Him climbing the Hollywood sign. What the fuck? The believed to be a YouTube prankster has climbed the Hollywood sign. Tim Lynn monitoring the situation overhead in Sky 5. Tim. He had a flag, like you said earlier on. It says, I'm back. I don't know where he was before, but apparently he is back. The next month on June 10th, he was again arrested for shrieking during Game 4 of the NBA Finals between the Cleveland Cavaliers and the Golden State Warriors. This time oh with my Trump God. sucks on his chest and LeBron, LeBron for, president for president on his back. Bro, this nigga is insane. I seen this too. I didn't know this was the same dude. Oh, this nigga is wildin'. Look, look, look at everybody. Golden State Warriors. This time with Trump sucks on his chest and LeBron for president on his back. In 2017, he shrieked at the World Series. Oh my god, yo, this nigga's wildin'. Oh, he's still going! Oh my god, this he is wild. He also got banned from attending any sort of sporting event, so he eventually got his girlfriend and his mom to streak for him. I, I guess they really love him. In January of 2020, Vitaly was arrested and spent five days in an Egyptian jail after climbing the pyramids of Giza. Oh yeah. Is this nigga serious? Yo, I ain't gonna lie. This is, yo, you're bugging. You had to get arrested at some point. This thing, you climbed the pyramid? You, are you... Is this nigga dead ass? This nigga's insane. He dead? Nah, he's done. Yeah, let's raise money. I did this for a good cause. Spread awareness by this beautiful pyramids in Egypt. Egypt, I love you. Oh yeah, and in 2016, he also started in his own movie with Roman Atwood and Dennis Rohde, which uh, wasn't that great. It was clear to see Vitaly was becoming addicted to the views. As time went on, YouTube became stricter and began punishing creators for making edgy content. This was horrible for Vitaly, as it meant he either was out of a job or had to become family friendly. He ended up yeah. becoming family friendly and now does toy reviews. Imagine, no, fuck no, no. He instead made an uncensored subscription service to see his videos uncensored. But by the looks of it, that didn't go anywhere. Vitaly began losing relevancy as YouTube suppresses content. And in 2020, his name was back in the news, but for something no one expected. In April of 2020, he was arrested and later charged for aggravated battery by the Miami Beach police. Vitaly tackled a female jogger and struck her multiple times on the head and chest. Your boy can stay back there. Put your hand on the car, man. No, just put your hand on the car. Just lean on the car, please. Lean on the car right there. You got it. I'm sorry, guys. And he seemingly did this for no reason, but it was later revealed that he was on shrooms. No, but mushrooms are good. I never had a bad trip until that one time where I flew. So I was COVID, um, COVID mushrooms. I was bored. Last thing I remember is a channel please help, please help. And I tried to hug her and she pushed me or whatever. And, and, uh, this, this nigga beat her off the shroom. You're, yeah, yeah, you're done. You're done. Yeah, the fucking, I, I hit her and. And like I, the thing is, the COVID mushroom. Now nah, he took mushrooms during COVID. That's what he's saying. But my thing is, um, don't ask me how I know this, but apparently when you take shrooms, you're supposed to have a babysitter, pretty much. Someone to make sure you don't do anything stupid because because you can have a bad trip. Like, People say certain things about mushrooms. I don't know. I've never partaken, but 
for the people that I know that have done shrooms, you're supposed to have a babysitter. You're supposed to have somebody watch you and make sure you don't do anything stupid. So that on that part is, is, uh, is, is, is your fault. So basically he hit a girl. Yeah. Um, he like, he apparently went out and beat a woman that was jogging. Have you ever been the babysitter? No, never done it either, but I've had friends who've done shrooms. So to realize what I was doing on top of her. And I was like, what the fuck? And I didn't even run back to the house. The article says I tried to hit in my house. I didn't know what was happening. He was released from custody after a $7,500 bond. Vitaly reunited with his attorney, Roger P. Foley, and released a video on how Roger was able to get him to avoid 15 years in prison. After filing in on the case, the charges were immediately reduced to a felony battery, a third degree felony. And after a few months, the case was reduced to a misdemeanor and eventually dismissed. I feel like if the charges oh, wow. got dropped because you have a really good lawyer, I don't know why you would make a video on it. It kind of seems like a big fuck you to the woman that got attacked Facts. right i avoided 15 years in jail because i got a good lawyer it's kind of a weird video to make fast forward to 2022 and vitaly seems to be trying to make a comeback to youtube with classics such as can i eat you out how tight are you and epic farting on girls prank someone needs to tell vitaly we're not in 2015 anymore yeah. he even does the what's up guys intro unironically and it's it's pretty sad. What's up, villains? Welcome to another video. The prank format on YouTube isn't what it used to be. Great examples of new prank channels are Balin Levine, Loaf, Kaisen Nat, Jideon, Jideon, and the list yeah. goes on. But these new era of prank channels have one thing in common. They all have a lovable main character. With Vitaly, it's gonna- Yeah, so it's like, it's like, they're, 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 um, the ones that they're doing are harmless. Like, it's just, it's like harmless pranks, you know what I mean? It's like cooking during a lecture, getting a haircut during the U.S. Open. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's it's harmless shit. You feel me? So, I don't know. It's going to be hard for him to gain an audience again, especially after being a woman beater. But I guess we'll see Damn. what's next for Vitaly. Yo, hold on, guys. Someone's knocking at my door. Hey, buddy. You're under arrest. What do you mean I'm under arrest? Because you don't have the new Earl drop. What the fuck are you talking about? You know, Earl, the brand you own, the new collection that just dropped the... Bad skit. Hey, W shirt, bad skit, gang. I go Back laugh. to school collection, and if people use code back to school, they get 20% off anything at the store. Hey, 20% off sounds really good. Give me that. There you go. Wow, this is- You don't even got the same lights on, gang. Like come quality. on. I'm gonna put it on off camera. Yes, off camera. Yeah, I don't get to see my nipples yet. <laughs> oh my God. Hey, that's kind of a dope, that's a dope tattoo. Hold on. Off camera. Yes, off camera. You got serial numbers. That's kind of dope. I ain't gonna lie. I mean, uh, Morse, was that Morse code or is it? No, it's not a serial number or Morse code. What is that shit? 01010, that's, that's, what the fuck is that? 01100101. Uh, first of all, serial numbers, bro, binary, binary, binary coding or some shit like that. That's, that seems right. Nigga, nigga had the nerve to type out serial numbers, dot, dot, dot. First of all, you spelled the wrong serial, nigga. <laughs> This nigga, this nigga spelled the wrong, <laughs> the wrong cereal and they gonna have the audacity to try to check me about what I said. Spell the right cereal, nigga. Fuck out of here. Nigga said cereal. Serial numbers. What the fuck is he? <laughs> what the fuck is he talking about? Off camera. Yeah, I don't hey, get to see my guys. nipples yet. Thank you, chat. <laughs> oh my god, it's embroidered. Look at that. Y'all still go to college? Nah, we go to Earl University. Isn't that right, cop? That randomly came <laughs> to my <laughs> room. Hey, that's very true. My kids actually go to Earl University. <laughs> Anyway, uh, you're- I ain't gonna lie. Tell you look like a, a, a male stripper cop here. I need you to get right. Really cute. Hey, what can I say? You are too. <laughs> get the fuck out of my room. <laughs> okay, okay. Guys, make sure to use code back to school to get this amazing Earl hoodie, which I will be wearing. Gum. The story of- yeah. Earl doesn't exist.com. Let's move on to the next one. Rice gum. The story of Brian Lee hot. is a really upsetting one, as I was a big fan of his in 2016. Back in 2016, it was definitely a, a different era. We had yeah. YouTubers such as Leafy, Pyrocynical, Grady Underay, Drama Alert, H3H3, iDubs, Filthy Frank, and yes, some of those YouTubers still upload to this day, such as Pyrocynical. Shout out Pyrocynical. If you know me, that's crazy because I look up to you. But we're talking about Ricegum in specific. I made a video dissecting Ricegum's fall off last year. So if you want a more in-depth version of that, you can watch that after this one. Anyway, Ricegum initially- You know what? And the thing is, Ricegum, bro, 
I used to fuck with rice gum too until like it was it's like he, he, I think he was doing like those um those like fake ass giveaway boxes or you know what I'm saying where you would spend like sixty dollars and get a random mystery box type shit that shit was so ass blew up off his these kids must be stopped series a series where he makes fun of cringeworthy kids on the musically app i don't know if you guys heard it this fucker just said i'll be drunk texting you i did some research this fool is 13. the public absolutely loved these videos and he quickly skyrocketed to 100,000 subscribers and only four months later he reached the 1 million subscriber mark he continued roasting other influencers and the main thing people looked forward to in his videos were the diss tracks your fans are little kids under the age of 12. tell me why your ears make you look like an elf you think i'm trying to roast you but i'm just trying to help psych i'm just here to give you this l didn't um didn't this god used to write his disses jacob something yeah i i i seen that little kid before but then i think uh dies of cringe <laughs> but then um i think this god used to write his disses or some shit like that now these diss tracks weren't good but they were extremely entertaining at the time as time went on he only grew and was becoming a mainstream youtuber it was great seeing this 19 year old achieve his dreams but on january 14th 2017 he uploaded a video which many fans to this day claim was the beginning of his demise finally moving out of my mom's house is a video where ricegum kind of just tells the audience he's moving he did move but three months later he moved again into the los angeles clout house an influencer house founded by faze banks which included Alyssa violet summer ray wolfie raps Phase K and some other forgettable cash shit. Yo, the clout. Oh, the clout house. Jake Paul team 10 era was so cringy, bro. But it was so bro. If I was reacting to that shit, then I should. I ain't gonna lie. I should have. I should have reacted to that shit. Then if I was reacting to that shit, then boy, I would have to the fucking moon to the moon. You know what I mean? So basically it was a face house. Yeah, I think niggas in face still live there to this day. But bro, to the moon, bro. But three months later, he moved again into the Los Angeles Clout House, an influencer house founded by FaZe Banks, which included Alyssa Violet, Summer Rae, Wolfie Raps, FaZe K, and some other forgettable people. And I don't mean that in a mean way, like some people in there were genuinely forgettable. Now, this is where Ricegum's downfall truly began. Not statistically, though. I mean, he peaked in popularity at this house. Bigger videos, better production, more money, more fame, but that all came with a big ego. You see, if there's anything I've learned from- Yeah, facts. This, I ain't gonna lie. If there's a nigga with an ego, it's rice gum. I ain't gonna cap. I'm like, yo, there's just, bro, d bro, Paul era sucks ass. It, it was a cringy time on YouTube, but I wish I was reacting at that time, bro. But nah, this nigga rice gum got an ego for sure. Doing research of I, I used YouTubers, to, right? I used to watch this nigga's videos. I used to watch him on Twitch. Like, not like, you know, uh, like everyday type shit. But like, if I came across it, I would click it. And this nigga, it was just nothing but, you know what I'm saying? Spreading my, I'm like, bro, damn. Like, I need some of that, but damn, that nigga got an ego. And it was, it was bad, bro. Rise and fall, or just celebrities rise and falls. It's to never get a big ego that will just make sure your career dies but i'm going off track now then one day idubs uploaded a content cop on rice gum a video where ian completely rips rice gum apart for being an arrogant money-fueled youtuber he is extremely insecure and he makes it very obvious when he uploads videos like this where he details how much money he earns in a month most youtubers won't show you this hey i ain't gonna lie i'm gonna go back and look at that see how much money this nigga was making i ain't gonna cap I want to see on YouTube. There's like this video that has been going crazy viral and basically in the video he shows how much money YouTube has paid him. Everyone just giving him so much props like everyone loves him. This dude is getting so much street credit. I'm like, I want some street cred too. Last month I made a roughly $60,000. Uh, $60,000 in a month on YouTube. 60,000. 60,000 in a month on YouTube, boy. Listen, listen, listen. It give give me give me 30 and I'll be straight. Shit, give me 20 for real. You know what I mean? Like damn nigga. Uh, I mean it's okay. It is actually my lowest paid month once again. I only got 20 million views. I'm not my lowest paid month. Boy, listen. 
I'm not sure what odds he's trying to improve. The odds that uh, a female will finally see him as a suitable sex candidate because he has money, or the odds that his child fan base will revere him more as a god. After this, Brian's videos began receiving a ton of dislikes. Now Damn. this to other people is Ricegum's downfall. I'll explain later why it wasn't. After this, his content began getting more, uh lewd but hey they got views right then he got into this mystery box scamming situation where he didn't even apologize he just pointed fingers and was like hey they did it too there's his youtube name reaction time he actually has more subscribers than me i don't know how because he's not cooler than me but anyways he see that was this that was his biggest problem because he's not cooler than me why you why you why are you doing that why are you doing that shut up reaction time though you know what i'm saying they videos come across my recommended sometimes you know what I'm saying? There's his YouTube name reaction time. He actually has more subscribers than me. I don't know how because he's not cooler than me. But anyways, he made the same type of video. The same type of video. Like three months ago. No one said anything. It wasn't a problem back then. Look, look, look. All these guys right here, right? They're in David Dobrik's crew. Whatever. They're influential. Got kid fans. Same thing. Open up boxes. This was three weeks ago. Way before I was doing it. Why did no one bring it up three weeks ago or even talk about these guys? It seems like after this, he just started uploading extremely inconsistently. Fast forward to 2021 and he became a full-time Twitch streamer. The last the general public heard from him was when he was beefing with KSI and then with Aiden Ross, which by the way, I don't know if that beef. was real or it not considering they lived in the same fucking house, but quite frankly, I don't care enough to look more into that. Ricegum's main channel hasn't seen an upload since 2020 and same with his Family Gum channel. He doesn't really tweet or post on Instagram. The times when he's most seen is on his girlfriend's TikTok, but personally, I truly believe that January 14th, 2017 Damn. was the beginning of Ricegum's downfall. Again, not numbers wise, but mentality wise moving to la doesn't mean you're gonna turn into this clout chasing demon but if you let the lifestyle consume you it will turn you to someone no one wants to support i really would be interested in seeing brian return to youtube with a more humble and charismatic attitude and i'll give him credit he made his bag and left he even started the entire diss track trend on youtube but he did. his image will always be remembered as the arrogant hype beast who let fame get to his head damn call me carson Carson King, aka Cody Carson, is. is a YouTuber who peaked at 2.9 million subscribers. And ever since the incident, his subscriber count has been trickling down. He began his YouTube journey by uploading Minecraft videos to his first two channels, which were incident. What incident? Called GamerCraft157 and Icebox Carson, before eventually moving to the Call Me Carson channel. His channel started taking off in 2017 with videos focusing on Discord trolling, reviewing internet media, and playing video games with his friends. The momentum continued, and the official name of his friend group became Lunch Club. It consisted of Call Me. Carson, it's Joko, Jay Schlatt, Slimesicle, Ted Nevison, Hugbox, Travis, Connor Eats Pants, and C Scoop. I hope I pronounced all of those right. I am so used to calling Ted Nevison. He was talking to underage fans on Discord. Ted Nevision, but I get corrected a lot. It seemed like nothing could go wrong for this friend group, and especially the leader, Call Me Carson. But on January 4th, 2021, a video was uploaded to Drama Alert of all places with the title Call Me Carson Serious Allegations Lunch Club Interview. Oh, In this shit. video, Lunch Club members Hugbox and Travis explained that Carson has been having inappropriate conversations with underage fans. This included the exchangement of lewd images as well. This information was told to them by Carson himself. That same day, a Twitter user whose information I'll be blurring out said this on Twitter. I can personally come out and say that I've been groomed by Carson. I have talked to many people and never came out about this since now. At the time, I was still 17 and in high school. Here's a few things he said to me. Alright guys, I hate reading word for word, especially when they're a little bit uh, inappropriate. Let's, let's get into this. I'm scared and I want to talk to you for the wrong reasons. Elaborate? What if I only want to talk to you for the sexual part of it? I don't want that, but like, I'm worried about it what if subconsciously i'm only talking to you because it turns me on or something is that really it's kind of corny do what you want what other options are there also what would you want to happen i don't know all i know is every time i jack off now i have a really hard time not thinking of you i guess hey what like that's supposed to be that's supposed to be like uh, like like what <laughs> nigga ain't no way this i can't oh my god i guess my brain got stimulated and now it wants more you know sorry i was in school but yeah i get that uh what if we read on snap and next time you're horny we can have some fun again i just don't want that to be the only thing we do you know yeah but fuck you're hard to resist so are you i feel like this is all my fault damn if anything it's my fault because i can't control myself fucking hell i want to but it's a bad idea i'm not gonna lie i'm scared of getting your hopes up or something i'm willing to try but it's such a bad idea but so is sexting you fuck carson later revealed in his discord that the texts were real long story short when i was 19 i sexted a couple of viewers that were 17 extremely regrettable and incredibly embarrassing felt guilty since apologized to them both and resolved it privately last year then keem got a hold of it like two days ago at the time the girl was 17 and carson was 19 years old though a two-year age gap 
recap isn't anything to glance about. I guess people did because one, this is a famous YouTuber and it's- I don't know. That's, it's, those is weird messages, but 17 and 19 is not crazy because if he would have been like, you know, 17 and 19 is not too crazy. It's like, it's like, it's like, eh, but it's not too bad. What y'all think is, y'all think 17 and 19 is bad? It's giving EDP. That was a lie. Was it? I thought it, yeah, I thought it was worse. I thought he was like 21, 22 with that shit. I don't know. It's easy to like nitpick anything a famous person does. Two, even though the age of consent in the majority of the United States is 16, talking to people that are under 18 on the internet is like a well-known no-no thing to do, especially if you're famous. And three, people argued that there was a power dynamic, which honestly is something I do agree with. I mean, think about Slightly, it. If yeah. you're a big YouTuber, your fans already see you as a god. So asking them for pictures might just make them feel like they're forced to because they don't want to let down their favorite YouTuber, right? Anyway, Carson lost followers, friends, and basically everything. He stopped uploading, stopped streaming, and would rarely tweet. And whenever he did tweet, he would like quickly delete it. It was like this for seven Damn. months until a video titled Moving Forward was uploaded by him. This specifically was August 25th, 2021. In this video, he doesn't discuss the situation at all. He says he doesn't want to make more drama and instead promotes the fact that he's going to be donating 100% of his earnings to charity. Hey guys, it's been a while. This isn't going to be your average YouTuber apology video and I'm not going to make it long and drawn out. I've learned a lot this past year. I'm not seeking forgiveness, nor am I looking to make excuses. I'm sure some of you are expecting some long drawn out video explaining my truth of the situation, you say, you say ugly? Uh, but I have no intentions of doing that. I'd much rather just tell you what I can do in the future. For the next year, I plan to donate 100% of my profits to charity. And since that day, he's uploaded seven more videos onto his channel, and his views clearly don't match to those before the situation. So yeah, Carson is back, but with not nearly the same amount of love he once used to have. Damn. In fact, he gets hate under every single tweet he makes. Yeah, I mean, there are definitely trolls that just don't like him, but uh, I think this is a perfect time to move on. Well, hello there. How you doing? I'm sorry to interrupt this video you got going on, but I came here to tell you something. We got new mo We got new merch. Boy, we got the STG family drop, all right? This is dropping as we speak. The link is in the description. The link is right here. It's simple. SimbaToGod.com. Dot com. Look, we got multiple 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 different styles and this is just one of them i got so excited i put it on and i had to just i was gonna take some photos i'm still gonna take some photos but just look at how it's looking look at look at look at look at i know you see it go to simbatogod.com go grab yourself a hoodie these will only be available from a month from today after that they will no longer be able to be purchased it's a one and done type of thing you see all that different type of merch? When, go, go in the description. Use 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 code family for free shipping and go get that done. Code family. Go get yourself some merch. Hey, shout out to y'all by the way. Damn. All right, guys, I want to give a quick update to the whole Call Me Carson situation. As you guys know, there's been a bunch of Twitch drama recently, and Hugbox actually wanted to add on to that. I won't say it like that, but I'll just say he did add on to the drama, though I didn't see anyone talk about this. Um, just happened to stumble across it while doing my research. So here's Hugbox's Twitter, and Hugbox actually made a twit longer uh, with the title Game Over. This got, it got almost 5,000 likes. Like, I would say it got, it got some attraction. I have no idea how I did not hear about this at all. But the twit longer is a, it's a lengthy read. It's I'm a very lengthy read. But uh, I'll just give you guys uh, the important sentences. I'm going to try to explain the relevant events of the last couple years in the most concise way possible. This was always written off as drama when I try to talk about it. But I only spoke of it because it really bothered box? me and I, have I no cared. Clue. It's not easy to be threatened with legal action when you're just trying to tell people what's going down. That's why my tweets were always so cryptic. I'm not a clout chaser. I haven't even made money over the last several years. Only alienated my audience since I started talking about this stuff. And at this point, want absolutely nothing to do with you. Sammy, get out, get out. And you, I, and, and, and I'm gonna tweet my tier list and I'm gonna make everybody angry. Guess where candy corn is going? It's not even going on a list. Cause it don't even deserve to be there. It's not even a candy. That shit is an abomination. 
the internet. We'll start with the Carson thing. I found out about what he did in March 2020, and for a moment considered tweeting it right then and there. Unfortunately, I did not have any concrete details initially. In fact, the few details I had were lies. The group had a meeting later that day which our manager, Ryan, told us that he had dealt with this several times before and we can make this go away. And some members of the group insisted that we needed to stick by Carson. At this point, I was checked out completely, but naively was shocked that so many people seemed to value their careers over doing the right thing. Over the next several months, I started asking around as to what others had been told, and found out that every single person was told an entirely different story as to how many girls he was contacting and what their ages were. This pushed me to do something, and I had actually gotten the entire group to agree to recording a video of each of us simply saying what we were told and uploading it directly to the Lunch Club channel. No baseless accusations, no clout chasing, just the truth. At the last moment, many pulled out of the video because in Schlatt's words, he had too much to lose. Deja vu. It was never supposed to go through Keemstar. I'm gonna skip this paragraph. Again, you guys can just go to Hugbox's Twitter to read the whole thing because it is a lot. Carson had a whole discord of content creators that aided him in strategizing damage control in the lead up to the drama alert because naturally Ryan had gone behind my back, warned him, and tried to prep him. I know this because not all of them suck and they told me what was up. Then the creators in that discord fled like rats from a sinking ship when it was clear the situation was not salvageable. I called Carson several times in the days leading up to the drama alert because I did not want the venue to discredit the story and I wanted him to take responsibility for his actions like a fucking adult. To this day he hasn't even admitted to what he did and everyone still thinks it was a two year age gap. That is not true. So oh, when we go shit. to the responses on the tweet, we get stuff like this. I like how instead of telling us why it was worse than a two year age gap, he simply didn't. Him. Elaborate on that. No. It's a very strange twit longer because, I mean, he's being cryptid like he said, but he says something about legal action, so... I don't know. I don't know so that. What I'm the just, fuck I'm was just the, the age gap? I want to make that clear. I'm just the messenger, and what the fuck I just felt like I should update then? you guys since something else came through to the story. It's very odd that Hugbox says that there wasn't a two-year age gap. It was that that was not it. But yet this girl says that she's 17. But I also remembered apparently there were multiple girls. I don't know. It's very weird. Oh, yeah, what I'm know. telling you guys is not factual. Again, just the messenger. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I guess now we're actually going to talk about another youtuber you know because we're continuing the video shout out to fine as a freddy's t-shirt but yeah let's head on to the next person on the list nice little add-in phase k and phase jarvis phase clan was created oh, yeah. into phase jarvis literally that nigga like he bro when that nigga uploaded a video of himself crying over fortnite i was like yeah yeah 2010 and began as a Call of Duty sniping team. Members would achieve impressive clips only using sniper rifles and later create montages which would be uploaded onto YouTube. When FaZe Clan started out, they were all just kids in high school enjoying the most played game at the time. Yep. By 2012, the YouTube channel had hit a million subscribers and it was the thing to know about FaZe Clan if you played Call of Duty. Bro, listen, e listen, everybody wanted to be in FaZe, dog. Everybody. When I say everybody, I mean everybody. Duty. Everyone and their mom wanted to join FaZe Clan at one point. I, I wanted I to join FaZe. So 2014 I. to 2016 is when I would say FaZe truly peaked. This was when the main members of FaZe all moved into a house in New York and called that the FaZe House. Many fans still say this was the best era to be a fan of FaZe. And FaZe hasn't stopped growing at all. They even have esports teams in every major video game. They also recruit athletes, and not to mention that their main focus is still Call of Duty, with members such as Swag who grind competitive Call of Duty. Also, I can't talk about FaZe without mentioning the best member, FaZe Jev. Yo Jev, if you're watching this, I just want to let you know you're a huge inspiration to me, and thank you so much for always being you. Anyway, let's first talk about FaZe K, who joined FaZe in 2013. This was thanks to his sniping skills. He would upload gaming content and occasionally have his younger brother Jarvis join in on videos. What's going on guys, this is FaZe K. And I'm doing a Q&A today. I asked some of you guys on Twitter to ask questions to ask my brother, who is here next to me. Though Kay never got nearly as many views as his American peers, I'll give him credit for going outside the box and attempting to capture the more IRL side of gamers. And when he would get views, it was for very out-of-place content like uh, water bottle flip videos. You'd never expect that to be uploaded by a FaZe member. What I the mean, hell? they brought in views, so he was doing something right. Around this time is when his younger brother Jarvis began uploading content of his own. But things would change in 2018 around Fortnite's Fortnite. peak. Yep. Kay would begin to make videos revolving around his little brother and Fortnite. The views were immense and at this point Kay was living in a new LA phase house or the clout house. 
either way was a fucking influencer house. Eventually, thanks to his skills and very, very saturated thumbnails, Jarvis joined the <laughs> one and only Face Clan in 2019. Yep. The momentum only continued. And then Jarvis got banned from playing Fortnite due <laughs> to using hacks in the game, aimbot to be specific. He wasn't playing competitively. He just downloaded some mods and uh, wanted to make a cool video out of it. I'm truly like so sorry. Epic, I know I have to take accountability for my actions and you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my best to accept any punishment or like comes my way simba's name is gonna be some shit like phase taz the guy, yo posture checker chill out chill out yeah i saw this video when he was crying that shit bro this shit was i'm like yo why why did you do this he got banned again in 2020 like after this i, I he had he didn't pop up on my timeline or my recommended anymore hey whatever happened epic games decided to make an example out of him and banned him from playing the game no this doesn't mean that when he goes to his friend's house and picks up the controller the fbi just breaks down the fucking door and arrests him it just meant that if he made any new accounts publicly they would all just automatically get banned. This also meant Jarvis had to switch content. He basically became a copy and paste of Phase Rug doing challenges and TikTok life hacks. By the way, these thumbnails are still, uh, they're very bright. In 2020, he quote unquote fooled the internet that he was playing Fortnite again. He went live and had someone else play for him. Then his username got leaked and Epic Games banned him on the spot. But when did Phase K and Phase Jarvis's careers Deal. go to shit? Kids. The Save the Kids crypto scam. Remember when every YouTuber was hopping onto the crypto coin mm. NFT oh, yeah. train? Well, this was one of them. This was a coin that claimed it would be used for charity and use the likes of K, Jarvis, Tico, Ricegum, and Nikon in order to get more clout. This was an entire mess, and I'm going to dumb it down for you guys, but if you guys what want full explanation, make sure to go watch Copyzilla's video. It's an amazing detailed video. But yeah, to dumb it down, fans would buy this coin thinking that the value was only going to go up. You know, they probably thought it was going to be the next Bitcoin, but instead, the owners of the coin just left with all the money i believe this and is called a it. pump and dump scam yeah, all pump the people and dump. in that video were a part of it except tico tico was genuinely innocent which is why he's back in phase now but everyone else in that video yeah they got a lot of money from the fans that were trying to support this charity damn they did a pump and not nah, a pump and dump is crazy a lot of hey, a lot of these people a lot were doing pump and dumps i think i think uh oprah tried to do a pump and dump um, they did a pump and dump. There was, there was a lot of YouTubers doing pump and dumps. I think FaZe Banks was even doing a pump and dump for real. They pumped up some fucking bullshit ass cryptocurrency, told a bunch of their fans to go buy the coin, and then they would sell at the highest price and take everybody's money and everybody would lose like mad bread in the, you know, it's, fa yo, that shit foul as fuck. Due to this, K was kicked from FaZe and Jarvis, Nikon, and Tico were suspended until further notice. And Ricegum, well, he's Ricegum. He wasn't a part of like any team or anything. He's just himself so this is where k's career started going downhill i mean why wouldn't it who wants to support a scammer then k came out saying that the mastermind behind all of this was sam pepper yeah the dude with black ops 3 dark matter for hair this response wasn't really taken that well Damn. and his views dipped right after this while editing this i thought i got the wrong channel i thought i put jarvis's channel instead of k's but notice how much k uses his brother in his thumbnails like do you not think you have a photogenic face i literally thought this was jarvis's channel i was like okay i might gotta re-screenshot it no this is k's channel i did not make a mistake again please stop the oversaturated thumb jesus hey they get clicks though it's unfortunate but they thumbnails. do jarvis had a boxing match which he won and he was back in phase then this video was uploaded why i left phase clan where he explains that he left phase clan because his big brother was kicked weird for me because i don't want to be a part of phase if like you're not in phase as well yeah because obviously me and you we um we started youtube you said Since why the very beginning, stop? trust <laughs> all of this happened because of you and you pushing me to like make videos start vlogging, you know, start streaming. It really all happened because you pushed me to do it. Aw, so sweet. Except not really, because this is when Jarvis would begin uploading less frequently and get less views. And no, YouTube shorts don't count because those views are from randoms, not your fans. I forgot to mention that they have another channel called Jarvis and K, where they do a- Damn, to have a mil, a mil, almost a mil point five and only do 47K is actually insane. Oh my God, damn. Upload more frequently, but the views aren't there either. And for some reason, while watching their videos, I feel like they're always finding a way to diss FaZe. Seven months ago, I left FaZe Clan and after watching these TikToks, I think I made the right decision. <laughs>
It's like, I, I get the vibe of like biting the hand that fed you. I mean, even the fans Damn. dislike the videos and it's very, it's very weird. I don't know. It seems like they have a big ego after leaving FaZe. I truly believe drivers could have saved his career by just staying in FaZe. It doesn't matter if you were banned from Fortnite. There's new Call of Duties every year to make content on. I get that family comes first and that's super respectable that he did that. But rejoining FaZe doesn't mean fuck you, bro. To your brother it just means you're looking out for yourself it's quite literally your livelihood nowadays they both upload shorts and mr beast inspired videos but it doesn't seem their audience is there anymore jarvis had a video get over a million views recently but it's because face members are in it pretty damn pretty ironic i mean you could have stayed you could have fucking stayed in the group but yeah let's head on to the next damn. one damn sucks to kiwis suck. kiwis first started gaining popularity in 2014 2015 when he was part of the call of duty team red, red reserve this red team reserve was i know i know a couple of people that was was uh crip was in in red reserve too wasn't he i think crip definitely was in red reserve that's crazy stepping stone to phase clan during this time the red house became a thing and this included formula random nix kiwis and game gandhi since we're talking about red i gotta mention red's best member game gandhi he was always the best person out of their crew and had the best content and it just sucks that he got grouped with these this team. Anyway, this house had a life of its own. Like, the chemistry was there and the Gandhi vlogs were sweet and to the point. They weren't seen as rip-off phase anymore, they were just becoming red. Until one day in 2016, Keemstar uploaded a video where Kiwis attempts to justify why he sent a 12-year-old girl images while he was 17. And that had started a year and a half before the interview, so now the girl was 14 and he was 19. Either way, it's fucking disgusting. And then he proceeds to shoot himself in the foot. Because- Okay, so it, you it's sent- just, it... NIGGA! 12? Yeah. Yeah. You're done. You're done. You're, you're done. 12? You're done. It was you just sent, weird. You sent pictures when you were 17 and she was 12. Now, I believe she said that she you said she was 14. I believe and the kick logs will the kick logs will prove it like if you guys get it like Okay, it's there, but she like, said she was 14 or whatever, but I bu but it she was It was a month ago. Yeah, and a month ago on Snapchat, yes. Okay, so a month ago you sent her a picture. Yes. But the problem with that is you're 19 and she's 14 at the time. But the th the thing, like, I was in a really, like, depressed... Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut the fuck up. Like, nigga, huh? Do you, do you not... Hold on, let me... <sighs> nigga, we see you. You're done. You're done. You're done. You you caught you got yourself caught. 4K thousand. Nigga. She said it was a month ago. Well, yeah, it was a month ago. Nigga, so it's still currently happening. Like you this this started when she was 12. She's now just 14. And you're still doing it. You're still doing it, nigga. Stay like I she was talking to me, like she kept on saying how she she like she was saying how she was so attached to me. And I, I was saying, and she said how she wanted to meet up, and I said, that's really weird, I don't want to meet up, like, that's something you can't be So you don't want to meet up, but you can send her your ding-dong pictures. Aye, for sure, gang. Yeah, yeah, that makes, that makes so much sense. It was so weird that she wanted to meet up. Why are you still having this conversation? Like, what? Bank on, like, that's just really weird, I, I don't want to do that. And she's 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 claimed that she wants to meet up with other people. There's there's another person in red that she talks to that she wanted to meet up with um, specifically. There's another person in red that she wanted. So all y'all niggas is filthy. Like you trying to take the heat off you. You still look like a garbage human being. And now someone else in your circle looks like a garbage human. L man's first of all because you snitch. But L man's because why are you doing this? And why is your friend? Yo, like, what is wrong with y'all? And we can talk more about that in private. But oddly enough, this wasn't the end of his career. He continued uploading and even uploaded a response video where he flat out victim blames the girl. I shouldn't have trusted this girl. I shouldn't have. I, I... This nigga said that shit like she was the problem. This nigga said that shit. I shouldn't have trusted this girl. Nigga. Listen, you are a popular YouTuber. She's a little girl that probably watches your content. Get the fucking car facts before you talk to anybody any type of way, bro. Get the fuck how hard like I just don't understand how hard it is. Like you know you're in a position to where people are going to try to talk to you because you have some type of status. Get the fucking car facts. Like talk to your parents about hey, uh, you know, this girl wanna talk to me, you know what I'm saying? So something like or something something damn
I don't know why I did what I did. She she convinced me that I could trust her, and it was a mistake. Trust? And that's something I will never make ever again. This girl trust? lied about her age and convinced me to send her pictures of myself. Like, she sent pictures to me too, but... His audience seemed to have liked it and supported it. By this time, everyone knew about the situation, and due to living in the Red House, the address was public. I don't know if they publicized it themselves, I'm sure they wouldn't dox themselves so fans could come over and say hi, but... Their address was known. Anyway, Kiwis got confronted at his own house by a random person, but it was done horribly. The person called him a Like, the dude filming could have at least had some factual stuff instead of just saying that he's a <laughs> Red formula. Yeah, the leader up, of guys? the Red Reserve. What's up, man? <laughs> what's good, man? How you doing, man? What's good? Uh, you a yeah. fan? Yeah, I'm a fan of the Red Reserve. <laughs> is Kiwis around? Yeah, he is. Uh, oh, do you wanna... think I could talk to him? Yeah, sure. Uh, you wanna, you wanna come on in for a bit? Yeah, sure. What? Red Kiwis. Oh, hey, DJ Titty Yeah, In real what's up? life, the man with the big shorts. <laughs> yeah, what's up, dude? Um, I wanted to ask you a question. Okay. Why did you f*** that girl? Oh, uh, you think you're funny? <laughs> Yes. Right. That is not funny at all, dude. Alright, you gotta leave me. <laughs> you wanna leave, bud? You gotta get out of the house. What, what, why did you do you it? You gotta get out of the house. Why did I? Why do you even know? What? See, and like, good, he deserves it. Yeah. But there's a way to go about it. There's definitely a way to go about it. This nigga didn't, he didn't, the dude that's doing this, he's not doing it for justice or nothing. He's trying to get a, a viral video. Like, there's there's different types of corny. This nigga is I want to get clout for doing this type of corny. So he's corny. The dude that's sending it like you're a fucking weirdo. What like you went inside their house, like like you went inside their house to like yo what's good everybody and then to you know what I'm saying? stand on that shit, bro. Like now you 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 look weird because it's like why did you go there in the first place? If it wasn't to get justice or to like really call somebody out on their bullshit like th that shit is corny what? Come on, yeah yeah i know the whole story get, get out of why did you do it why did you do it you sent your dick online yeah, to a girl hey, that, was four, that, was that was 14 years old that was 14 years old do you realize that do you not understand that she completely lied about her age get out of the house it's proven y'all are all just trash human beings i ain't gonna lie Still living in a in a house with a nigga who fucking sends pee pee pics to an underage girl, corny. Being a nigga that sends pee pee pics to an underage girl, fucking weird. Being a nigga that goes up in a house for clout, corny. All the, this whole group of just niggas that I'm looking at, cornballs. You just like it's like, bro. That's why I'm here. The reason why Kiwi's story is so odd is because he never stopped uploading. He even peaked in 2018, two years after that situation. This was, of course, with the help of overly saturated Fortnite thumbnails. Yay. Fast forward to 2021 and skipping over his new team, which failed. Drummuller uploaded a documentary about him and he got dislikes for a little bit, but kept uploading. His views nowadays are nowhere near his peak and it's just sad, really. Seeing when YouTubers ruin their careers, but don't have anywhere else to go because they make their money on the internet. I mean, they could go work at their local food for less, but I think at that point, of being a YouTuber, your ego's really high, so you just don't want to do that. And there's a chance you could get recognized, which is always gonna be awkward. We're literally watching these people die inside, but yeah. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching the video. I just wanna say I don't condone the harassment of any of these people. I don't want my subscribers to be those subscribers that go to these pages and leave hate comments. Don't do that. Let's just, just watch from the sidelines, chill out. But looking at all these names, I would Jesus. the only person I would say really didn't do anything wrong, just made like a, I guess a, bad decision was Jarvis. I don't think he did anything to get canceled for. He just got banned on Fortnite and uh, he chose his brother over FaZe Clan, which I think was a wrong decision. Yeah, I just <laughs> wanted to make that clear. Leave a like, make sure to subscribe to the channel and it. make sure to go to earldoesnexist.com to get yourself my some fucking new Earl clothing and use code back to school for, I don't even know how much percent off, it's on the screen. Yeah, music <laughs> video coming out soon. The name of that song is Overdose and that'll be part of my nine to 10 track EP. There will be a whole movie on this channel. So I can't wait for you guys to see that. I'm so excited. Sorry for missing an upload. I was recording the music video for that. So follow me on TikTok, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram. All the apps were right there. Specifically TikTok, like I hate when I pop up on people's for you page and they're like, oh my God, you have a yes, I have a I have all social medias, bro. W Vit. What'd you thought? I'm a YouTuber. I gotta have it. I gotta have it. I'm gonna go have sex with your mom and I'll see you guys and next time I upload. Talk about beat your ass, nigga. I'll meet your fucking ass, tough. Anyway.
That'd be vid though. Um, all in all, niggas is weird.